my main work in the Sahara that summer was uh, dishwashing. Uh, I was a passionate dishwasher. I have remained a passionate dishwasher, which makes you very uh, popular with your hostesses. And uh, when I was finished with the dishes uh, at the end of the summer, uh, since this monastery was still brand new, uh, they asked me to uh, leave behind uh, some uh, um, advice for the dishwashers that would follow me. So I wrote down various ways, things where the thing, dishes were kept and, and little tricks like putting vinegar in the water with which you uh, rinse your glasses so that they come out clear and sparkling. And then I wrote that uh, uh, in the rule of St. Benedict, uh, St. Benedict, the, the uh, uh, teacher of, of Western monks, the patriarch of West, Western monks, writes that uh, in the monastery every pot and pan should be treated like the sacred vessels of the altar. That's a, a passage from the Holy Rule. Well, that went over big with the Zen monks and uh, about Oh, only a few months, maybe three months later, uh, I came to a Hindu ashram in New York State. And when I was introduced as Brother David, they asked me, Oh, are you Brother David the dishwasher? Uh, this had traveled all across the continent. And they said, we have this passage about the uh, sacred pots and pans uh, in the monastery being this, like, to be treated like the sacred vessels in order. We have that over our sink. So within a few months, this had traveled from San Fran from uh, Tassahara to this ashram here in New York State uh, because it, it speaks to the, to the soul of monks. It's just something that's universal monastic. I, I lived for 14 years uh, in Big Sur, in this hermitage in Big Sur. And uh, that's very unusual for a Benedictine monk to live in another monastery. But uh, there were some young monks who just had discovered monastic life on their own and had lived for several years as monks very strictly. Uh, they came out of the hippie scene and they wanted now to affiliate themselves with a Benedictine monastery. And so my abbot sent me there to help them in the transition. What are people looking for when they go to a house of prayer? What is one looking for when one goes to, the, to a hermitage? Well, uh, on a, on a superficial level, from all our busyness and activity, you're looking for a place of silence and quiet. Uh, but on a deeper level, uh, there is this uh, quiet core uh, to our being, uh, this quiet depth to our human heart. And uh, if you find sufficient external uh, silence, it is easy to let yourself down into that, that uh, deepest center of yourself. Uh, uh. <coughs> my, first, uh, uh, my first appearance in Esalen was very funny. Uh, I had been invited down by Stanislas Graf, uh, who gave uh, month-long workshops, and during those month-longs invited other teachers to, to get, uh, stay for a day or two and give lectures, and I had been with him a couple of times, so the people in Esalen knew me. And then one uh, uh, Friday, one Saturday morning, I get a telephone call from the Esalen office when I was up in the Hermitage in Big Sur, uh, saying, um, <coughs> we have uh, 18 people here who came for a workshop, uh, and the leader didn't show up. And uh, we, we, this last night he didn't show up. We thought he was coming this morning. This morning he isn't showing up. Would you be able to give the morning talk in half an hour? That was just about time enough to get down to Esalen. And I said, well, I'd be glad to help you out. Uh, and completely forgot to ask what that subject was. Uh, I thought, well, if they invite me, they will know uh, that I can do it. So I came down there and I find of those 18 people, 12 still left, very angry. And the topic of the weekend workshop was why I'm not a Catholic. So, so I had to rise to this occasion and, and, and tell them, that, uh, you are angry, just imagine my situation. Uh, and 
somehow or other I could keep their attention. And uh, we went and made it through the workshop. And to this day, there are still one or two people who, from this first workshop, come back whenever I give a workshop at S1. But it was a rather uh, unusual introduction. <laughs> I finally retired from lecturing, uh, I was quite exhausted and I thought that, uh, you know, well, that was more or less the end not only of my lecturing career but of my life and so I uh, expected to die and, and prepared myself but <laughs> obviously one die, doesn't die so quickly and easily and so uh, now after some years uh, I feel uh, that I still have something to give, and particularly uh, it, it was the website that came up at, at that time uh, through meeting Daniel Luvanovich uh, and several other uh, young people. Uh, uh, we started this website on gratefulness, and uh, that uh, took off uh, to my great surprise because uh, gratefulness is something that really speaks to people uh, very deeply, on a very deep level. It is something that, that is connected with this deepest uh, religious uh, experience of humans, this uh, openness, this uh, full response to a world that is gratuitously given to us, a life that is gratuitously given, every moment that is a given moment. Uh, and so we have now thousands of people coming every day to the website, individuals, and uh, it is a, 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 a new way of being able to serve people, and uh, I reach many more people this way than I ever reached lecturing.